Okay, <clears throat> last time I've seen about stress, strain graph, and like this different uh, line. This one shows different types of material like brittle material, plastic material, ductile material, and so on. And the different points were discussed, like the point of uh, elastic limit, uh, as we see in this graph, the point of uh, fracture. So they will proceed to the uh, next one, which is about there are three kinds of uh, strain that we need to consider. Uh, so uh, before we see the strain and the stress, as you can see in these two diagrams. <coughs> This is a bar uh, under tension. We have a force in perpendicular direction, one to the right, the other is to the left, and the cross sectional area is given as A. And the original length is given as L sub naught, and so the stretch will be the total length will be the original plus changing length. So from this, it is possible to find tensile stress as well as tensile strain. So whenever you find the stress, we have to consider for several area and the strain changing length over the original length for such type of uh, uh, bar or road. So tensile stress, we have to consider the perpendicular force. But when we look at the shear stress or shear strain, in this case, for the first one, especially shear stress, we have to take the uh, parallel force. Now let's see this one tensile stress so tensile stress when any bar of a rod or a wire of uniform cross-sectional area are pulled with equal and opposite forces of magnitude this much the bar will under a stretch by tensile uh, stress defined as the ratio of the force magnitude is one to the cross-sectional area so tensile stress tensile stress uh, will be equal to the perpendicular area uh, and the perpendicular force sorry, divided by <coughs> the area okay the other one is we have to see the shear stress as well as the shear strain so this is another uh, type of deformation of a spin an object is subjected to a force parallel to one of its faces one of its faces means you can see from uh, the diagram uh, so we have this diagram uh, next to this slide so uh, we apply force to one of its spaces just to describe for you uh, let's consider this one this is an example so this is the first phase the second phase third phase this is number four number five and we have six phases so uh, <clears throat> if we consider this force, this is a parallel to this uh, surface, the area, and this force is parallel to this one or tangent to the surface. You can consider tangent to the surface. So these forces are under consideration whenever we calculate the shear uh, stress uh, value. So let's come back to the previous slide. Uh, so the previous slide, this one shows another type of uh, deformation for shear because when an object is subjected to a force parallel to one of its faces while the opposite face is held fixed by another force. So this figure name is taken from the module. So the stress is, uh, in this case, is called uh, shear stress. So if you want to find the shear stress, you have to take this one, the force, and uh, the area. So the shear stress can be also calculated as the parallel force divided by the area. Whereas the shear strain is defined as the ratio of uh, x over h, where x is the horizontal distance that we need to consider that the shear forces move and h is the height of the object. The formula, <coughs> as we can see, it is x over h or it can be considered r tan phi uh, it can be seen here in this diagram in the second for shear strain this is before shearing or if you're applying a force the deforming force so uh, we have h value and here is the area so after applying this parallel force or, or tangential force so there is uh, 
a change uh, in x value the original x is zero so this is x then this one is phi therefore shear stress is the power force divided by the area in the other one that we need to take is the shear strain which is uh, x over h value so these are the very important points that we get from uh, this one so when you proceed to the next one we will get volume stress and uh, volume uh, strain so in this case uh, the volume stress is a stress which causes the volume deformation on our objects and define uh, the ratio of the change in magnitude of the applied force to the surface uh, area and if you want to find the volume strain uh, uh, so uh, we get uh, we have to get this change in volume volume and then divide by the original volume then it's possible to get the volume uh, strain so it's different from the appear the previous one the like the shear strain uh, in that case we have to consider h uh, x and h value but in case of this one the volume stress and volume strain we need to consider the change in volume and the original uh, volume okay this is the best example that we have uh, as you can see this one which is drawn by using hidden line is the uh, original volume and after the uh, applying of force in all direction perpendicular to the objects we have get this volume so this volume as we compare to the larger one there is a decrease in the values of volume so the final volume the smaller one and the initial volume the larger one will get a negative sign so uh, we'll talk about negative sign uh, when we discuss about the bulk uh, modulus so <coughs> the volume stress volume strain is equal to change in v over the original and volume stress is written by uh, the pressure change in pressure you know that pressure is equal to force over area so volume stress it can be expressed by using uh, this one which is change in pressure okay so next to this uh, we have to see uh, the different types of um, whenever we see the elastic uh, modulus so stress will be proportional to strain if stress is sufficiently small in this regard the proportionality constant is known as elastic modulus so it depends on the material being deformed on the nature of deformation so stress is equal to the elastic modulus multiplied by the strain so from this we can have the three different types of elastic modulus the first one is Young's modulus the Young's modulus is uh, the ratio of tensile stress and tensile strain and the Young's modulus can be represented by Y, capital Y, which is equal to the tensile stress divided by tensile strain. So this is an example that we have regarding the Young's modulus. Uh, we can uh, have a formula like this. So Y, which is the Young's modulus, equal to tensile stress divided by tensile strain. So tensile stress again is equal to the perpendicular force divided by the area whereas the tensile strain which is changing lengths divided by the original lengths. So in this case we can have different types of question. For example uh, different materials have different values of this one y which is the Young's modulus. So uh, by having the name of the material the specific name of the material it may be copper it may be a steel it may be tungsten or something else so we can easily find the unknown value for example we may apply a perpendicular force to that material that road so if we know the change in angles and the other one the original angles it is possible to find the radius where the area for this circular road is equal to pi r squared so after we found the area it is possible also to find the radius because the area is equal to pi r squared in case of uh, this one okay now let's proceed to the next the next is about the shear modulus and we can represent the next one is shear modulus 
uh, with units of Pascal. Uh, we know that's Newton per uh, meter square. So it's the ratio of shear stress to shear strain. Uh, it is a measure of resistance to the motion of planes within a solid parallel to each other. Uh, so the shear stress, this is the formula S shear stress, shear stress divided by shear strain. So in that case, when finding the shear stress, we have to consider the parallel force divided by the area that the force is applied. So this force is parallel to this area or tangent to the area and shear strain is x to the horizontal distance uh, when it's uh, directly proportional to the force so when we apply force and increase the force we have a change in x value so this is uh, considered to be uh, in some cases there will be a change in the values of uh, h so this is the formula that we have this is an example that we need to uh, consider so there is uh, n change x value and l so with this change in x and l we can find the shear strain so we know that um, this uh, tan value of uh, theta is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side so therefore tan phi is change in x over this one therefore with this it is possible to write that the shear strain is equal to the value of tan theta or phi tan theta or beta it's possible so this is the force the parallel force that you consider and this one is the area that we need to take the area this one not this area or this area so we have to take only the upper side uh, area so the force parallel which is this force is considered in order to find the shear modulus Okay, the other one is regarding the bulk modulus and again the SI unit is taken to be Pascal, the ratio of volume stress to volume strain. Now we have three different types as we have seen to the first, the third one is bulk modulus. Uh, so the first one is Young's modulus and the other one is shear modulus. This is the last one. So in this case we have to consider this one. So uh, bulk modulus measures the distance of solis or degrees to change uh, their volume so the bulk modulus which is represented by b is volume stress divided by volume strain so we have uh, change in the values of the force divided by mm, the area so this indicates the change in the values of the pressure so the volume strain is changing over v0 by the way there is a minus sign so the importance of minus sign is written here the negative sign is inserted in this definition equation so that b is positive number so the bulk modulus is positive number for example let's take uh, this simple example this is uh, uh, one the original uh, volume that we need to consider uh, which is uh, drawn by a hidden line so as you compare to the final one after we apply force this one is larger so when it subtract the final volume from the initial we will get a minus value a minus because the uh, original volume is larger than the final one so therefore when it subtract one from the other or the initial from the final so we will get minus sign minus multiplied by minus of this the result of this one is minus final it become positive so that is the application of negative sign so it doesn't have other application so with this it's possible also it's possible also to find the compressibility starting from this bulk modulus so this is all about uh, the bulk modulus and next one is regarding the strain energy the energy stored in a stretch wire so if x is a stretch due to the force applied on the given object so the strain energy is equal to 1 over k multiply uh, by x square is equal to the values of strain energy and the other thing that is important uh, values are listed here in this table so typical values of uh, the Young's modulus, shear modulus, and bulk modulus for different materials.
for example, in uh, tungsten, uh, we have the angstrom modulus value, which is 35 times a raised to 10 newton per meter square. But shear modulus is 40 times a raised to uh, 10, and bulk modulus is 20 times a raised to 10. So for steel, we have 20 times a raised to 10. Let's continue like that. We have different things for steel, copper, brass, aluminium, and so on. Okay, so these are the different values but for especially for glass we have the interval which is from 6.5 to the uh, 7.5 7 there is 10 regarding the Young's modulus because it's not fixed just like this one like steel like copper and so on for glass are of different types so they may have a variation in the values of Young's modulus shear as well as Belkus modulus, that's why it's given in interval uh, for. Okay, now let's proceed to the next one.